welcome back to Otaku no Video. As always, thank you very much for joining me. Where today I'm talking about the 1998 anime TV series Serial Experiments Lane. This is part of a series of videos I'm doing talking about that show. This one in particular is entitled What the Heck Did I Just Watch? Because Lane can be kind of hard to follow, in case you couldn't tell. And this video is my attempt to bring together the story and the plot and to explain what actually happened. This is complicated by the fact that the creators have explicitly said that any interpretation of the show is valid, i.e. you can see the entire thing is a fever dream, and that is just as valid as the original creator's intentions and thoughts about what actually happened in the show. And I don't want this video to invalidate that at all. One of the reasons I love this show so much is because it can be approached from so many different angles. I made this video for folks who are completely lost or who just don't understand and are confused by some elements of the show. Some things just don't, don't add up. So here's one explanation that hopefully will help. The story all starts with Dr. Masami Eri working at Tachibana Labs on Protocol 7, i.e. the next version of the Wired or the Internet. And apparently he was a chief engineer on the project and he introduced some code into Protocol 7 that would break down the connection between the real world and the wired, i.e. would allow people in the physical world to somehow also access the, the wired without the, the need for an actual physical device of some sort. And now it's unclear the exact ordering of these events, but he also at some point stumbled on or was possibly working on this other project at Tachibana Labs to create essentially an admin user for the entire wired, sort of a root user in Unix speak for the entire internet. And this was going to be Lane, a human level intelligence that could be called upon to go in and fix anything happening on the internet. And apparently he released an early version of Lane with her personality onto the wired. Now it's unclear as to whether it was this or the Protocol 7 changes that were found, but he was somehow found out. He then committed suicide. This allowed him to upload his consciousness onto the wired and live there as kind of the god, along with this early version of Lane, whom I will be calling Lane of the Wired from this point on, uh, on the wired. He also then uh, eventually, at some point, founded the Knights himself. Now, as far as I can tell, the Knights are simply a hacker group that are introduced into the story to be a convenient hacker group that do hackery things. Uh, they are basically Ares' disciples and his workers in the real physical world, but I don't think they have much more to do with the plot other than that that I can tell. Meanwhile, Tachibana Labs had a really big problem. There were these big holes in Protocol 7, and they needed some way of fixing them. And the only way of fixing that at that kind of a level was with this lane. And unfortunately, they saw the lane of the wired was kind of psychotic. So they decided to create a physical human body for lane. There's a moment in the show where they say the Tajibana Labs had mapped the human genome. I think that's a reference to the fact that they could actually build a human body for lane. And so they built this and they decided to give lane a normal human life. They realized they needed this root user to understand human reality, understand the nature of being human. And so they decided to sort of incubate Lane for a while. So they took uh, one of their workers, Yasuo Iwakura, and basically had him uh, adopt Lane into his family and live there for who knows how long, uh, where she would be able to experience the normal kind of human experiences that people experience. Separately, a guy named Professor Hodgson developed something called the KIDS system, KIDS. And this was an experiment to basically look for psi powers, PSI psi powers. Now, he knew that this existed very weakly in a few people, and it was most present in children, but even then it was very weak. So he had the brilliant idea of hooking up a bunch of children in a giant array and, and storing all that energy. Unfortunately, it created a giant feedback loop and a very nasty accident. So he shelved the whole project. However, later on, the Knights discovered this and decided to use it, probably because Aerie told them to. The Knights then had the kid system installed in a club called Siberia as a test. So basically, if you went into this club, you would hear this music, and I think it had something to do with the speakers and, and the music itself. 
and it actually affected you. So somehow this kid system was interacting with these changes in protocol seven and people's psychic abilities to further break down that separation between the real world and the wired. So the kids who were going into this club were getting more and more connected to the wired itself. And this is why kids started experiencing these weird visions and these weird connections to the wired after going to Siberia. And now we come to the beginning of the actual show where Chisa Yamoda, an acquaintance of Lane would be the best term, went to Siberia and was opened with her consciousness to the wired and this breakdown between the two and commits suicide. And by doing so, she's able to upload her consciousness to the wired. Then Lane gets the emails from Chisa and begins investigating. Alice invites Lane to Siberia and the technology in Siberia begins affecting Lane. Now obviously Lane has all these latent powers relating to the wired and this, these experiences in Siberia are beginning to give her access to these. Now as we see later, Lane has a bit of a split personality. There's her normal passive personality and then there's her sort of admin of the wired personality which I call wired Lane. And Apparently, this is triggered at moments of great stress, again, as we see later in the show. And it happens particularly with a gunman in, the, in si the Club Siberia. Now, it's at this point that the gargoyles show up, the two men who watch Lane from the street. These guys are clearly from Tachibana Labs, which is strange because so is her father. So there is presumably some, maybe several factions within Tachibana Labs, or some mistrust as to whether Yasuo is really doing the best job he could with Lane. The gargoyles then invite Lane back to some Tachibana Labs office where that really weird guy clearly starts pushing Lane's buttons. He starts probing her about her family and how much she knows about her family. And by the way, those are really unfair questions he's asking. How many 14-year-olds know the exact date of their parents' birthdays? Some do, but not all. He's clearly pushing Lane and pushing her buttons to try to get that wired Lane personality to surface. That admin personality to come out, and it sure, certainly does. So this proves to him and the gargoyles that Lane has what it takes, but that side of her isn't ready to fully come out yet. It just hasn't matured. Then things start going downhill. Lane of the Wired, the earlier version of Lane, spreads the rumor about Alice, and Alice having this relationship with the teacher, which by the way turns out to be true. This horrifies Lane and leads Lane to use her powers for the first time. She resets everyone's memories because memories are basically software. If we have this connection to the wired, she can rewrite our memories and block us from remembering certain things. So she, she makes everyone forget this rumor about Alice. Lane doesn't touch any of Alice's memories as part of this reset though. Now this is an interesting twist because it makes sense. You don't really want to mess with your friend's memories. Unfortunately, Alice can still remember all the bullying, but it doesn't reconcile with reality, which drives Alice kind of crazy. Alice then confronts Lane in layer 12 and basically explains the problem. And all Alice can assume is that Lane hates her because why else would she set up the situation that completely screws with Alice's mind. This isn't what Lane wanted at all. Unfortunately, Aerie takes this moment to manifest and the subsequent standoff between Lane and Aerie basically breaks Alice's mind. She's completely traumatized by this. And this really hurts Lane, that this thing that Lane had to deal with really hurt her friend. And this causes Lane to take the big step. She resets everyone's memories so that Lane never even existed. Now it's important to note here that it is possible that Lane actually really did exist, but because memories are software, Lane just changed everyone, everyone's memories so that they remember events differently and they just don't remember Lane being there. They remember Chisa being there, things like that. This doesn't exactly jive with the whole thing people, people think of people being dead and then showing up again, but you get the idea. Unfortunately, Lane is now alone and miserable, cut off from humanity but she has a vision of her father who reassures her that Lane is a good person, i.e. while she's made mistakes, she still has the right to exist. Lane decides to then appear to Alice much later in Alice's life. 
creating a memory of Lane in the real world and as a connection to the rest of humanity. This is much further in Alice's life than any of the stories, so there's no chance of messing with Protocol 7 or any of those things. And it's basically safe and gives Lane some sense of closure, and that's where the story ends. Oh, and all the stuff about aliens, total red herring.